Hey Threadheads, Darren here. First off, I hope everyone's doing well and has been able to keep their sanity as well as I have. I've been lucky enough to have been able to been uh, tying flies this whole time. I've got a lot of orders, so as you can see, I'm perfectly in my element here and uh, nothing to worry about. Hope everyone out there is being safe, but I decided to put together a list of 10 things you as a fly tire can do just to kind of pass the time in isolation. Let's have a look at it. Number one, read about fly tying and fly fishing. I'm sure if you're anything like me, you've got a few books that you need to crack the spine on. I'll admit I'm guilty of skimming many of the books and magazines in my own library, but there's certainly some merit in getting immersed into a retelling of adventures had by others. I get inspired to add a few new places that I'd like to visit over the season, as well as get interested in a few different techniques and, of course, I'm going to be introduced to a bunch of new fly patterns that I haven't tried before. Number two, reorganize your fly boxes. Now here's a great opportunity to pull out all 34 of the fly boxes that you own and get the flies in all of those boxes organized. I like to keep my boxes divided into similar fly types and I have boxes for coronavids, eggs, worms, nymphs, beadhead nymphs, tungsten beadhead nymphs, rabbit strip streamers, feather wing streamers, Bucktails, dry flies, big dry flies, steelhead, bass, pike, leeches, etc. I also like to put together specific boxes for different locations, uh, certain rivers that I'm going to fish, just so that I have a nice selection of flies when I get to the river. And I don't have to bring six or seven of my boxes just to make sure I've got a good selection of flies. Number three, order some new fly tying materials. No doubt there are a few different fly tying materials or hooks that you may have either run out of or just can't seem to find in that huge pile of fly tying materials that you keep on your desk. In that case, why not support one of your favorite fly shops or an online retailer? Most of them are still open during this time, but might have reduced hours, so just check before you place an order. You might want to finish reviewing this list before you submit your order, as you might feel the need to add a few more items to your cart by the end of it. Number four, start a new fly tying project. Is there a set of flies you've always thought about tying? Now might be the perfect time to dig in and start perfecting your methods. Some of the interesting ideas I've seen are to recreate the flies from a specific book or collection. If you're ambitious, you can take on some of the larger sets like the Bergman wet fly series or the Carrie Stevens Featherwing Rangely streamers and tie them to frame them up. If you have a favorite fly tying book, why not tie your way through the entire book? If you're a member of the Fly Fishers International, you could put your focus on completing the Fly Tying Skills Awards. There's three different levels, bronze, silver, and gold. That should keep you busy for a while. Number five, clean up your fly tying bench and organize your materials. You know what they say, a cluttered desk is a cluttered mind, and therefore an empty desk. Wait a minute. Um, it seems inevitable that every fly tire will eventually get buried into a pile of fur, feathers, and synthetics if they neglect to clean off the fly tying desk every so often. An added bonus is that you might just also find that pack of hooks you thought were lost, or that material that you've been looking for for the past three weeks. If you have some items that you no longer need, consider putting them aside in case there's a need for tying supplies for either a youth group who's interested in starting to learn how to tie flies or one of the nonprofit organizations like Project Healing Waters. They can always use some fly tying materials, some odds and ends, some hooks that you're not going to be using anymore, that sort of thing. Number six, clean and get your gear prepared for the upcoming season. Pull out all your reels, your rods, your vests, your packs, your boots, your waders, your nets, your watercraft, everything that you're going to be needing on the water. Make sure everything's in good working order. Replace any old tippet and leader material that may have become a little bit brittle as it's been exposed to UV. Get rid of the garbage stuck in your vest pockets. Give your fly lines a good cleaning. Lube up your reels. Make sure you have a good supply of consumables like fly floatant indicators and split shot if you so require it. 
Write a letter to one of your fly angler friends and send them a couple flies. We're all a little isolated right now, but that doesn't mean we need to be on our own. It's always a nice surprise to hear from someone you haven't spoken with for a while. So why not take the initiative and write a letter to a good friend? It's a great time to swap a few stories from last season's adventures, uh, send some fly patterns you think they might enjoy, and uh, maybe even slip in a photograph or two. You could even invite them out for a day on the water when conditions improve and you're both up for it. It'll be just as welcomed. And don't forget to share some of your adventures on your social media with some of your good close friends. Number eight, start planning a few trips for the upcoming season. I know spring is getting close when I start looking for new spots to hit in the upcoming season. Most provinces and states have published fishing regulations that are a great starting point for finding a new location to wet a line. Do some research on where to park and how to access the water. I like using Google Maps and Google Earth. It's a great resource for checking out the potential spots. You can even find a few pockets that you might not have otherwise seen. Find out what kind of water conditions to expect and which species live in the water that you're planning on targeting. And put together a selection of flies that you can ensure you've got a good chance of success with. Number nine, watch some fishing videos and fly tying videos. It's incredible just how many great fly tying videos there are right now. In particular, the fly tires of YouTube are cranking out an epic level of fly tying content. There are also tons of fishing videos from conventional gear anglers and fly anglers alike. These are great ways to get some info on getting out to explore new water and to learn about some new skills you're interested in trying out, as well as getting into a whole slew of new fly patterns to try out for this upcoming season. Be sure to leave a comment, even if it's just to say hi or thanks for the video. Video creators love that sort of thing and it keeps them motivated to keep making more videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels that you really enjoy and give thumbs up. Be sure to keep things on the positive side and ask questions if you do have any. And number 10, of course, tie some flies. All right, this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Tie some flies. Fill in the gaps that you found while you were organizing your fly boxes. Take on that fly tying project. Try out your new fly patterns you've seen on YouTube and the ones that you got from your friends who sat down and wrote you a letter. Break out the material you bought for that one obscure pattern and tie a few to try out for the upcoming season. It doesn't matter. Just keep a hook in your vise. Do you have any other ideas for fly tires to help them pass the time? Leave your suggestions down in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Darren saying keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.